Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you database system architecture. This diagram that you see is the diagram of a database system architecture and a very important one if you want to understand how DBMS actually works. This diagram explains to you all the components that are present in a database management system. And so if you know this very well, then you'll be able to understand DBMSs a lot better. So we're going to zoom in on one of the components, which is the storage manager. And we're going to talk more about the storage manager. So the storage manager acts as an interface between the low level data that is stored in the DB and the application programs. So application programs are all the programs that use the database. For example, in your day-to-day -day life, if you are accessing your results through a university web page, then that is an application program. If you are accessing some web application on your mobile phones, that is also an application program. Now, all these application programs are high-level programs because you are able to interact with them without writing any code or knowing machine language. But at the low level is where the data is actually stored. So this is the place where your uh, computer or the servers, they store their data. Now between this low level uh, storage, data storage and the high level application programs, there has to be some place, some interface, a bridge that can help transfer the data from the low level storage to those application programs and that is the role of the storage manager. It interacts with the file manager. So what is a file manager? A file manager is what you might be familiar with if you are using a mobile phone and you would be having an application there called file manager. It doesn't actually store your data for you. That storing of data is done by your, your mobile phone, the system behind it and you can't really know how the data is stored. But the file manager shows you a list of that data because the data in the memory is actually not stored in that way, not in the way you see it in the file manager. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, uh, a little while in the video. Now, the storage manager particularly stores, retrieves and updates data in the database. So these are the things done by the storage manager. The first thing is it stores the data in the database. It retrieves the data from the database and it also makes updates to the data as and when required. Now we're going to look at the storage com manager components and you can see there are four components. We are going to see about these components one by one. The first one is the authorization and integrity manager. It tests for satisfaction of integrity constraints and authority of users. What are integrity constraints? Integrity constraints are constraints that are set by the person who made the database in order to ensure the correctness of the database. If you have ever created a Google form with an error and uh, if you are trying to fill some characters in the mobile number uh, section, then you'll get an error because it's only accepting numbers. So this type of integrity check has to be done by the person who created the form in order to avoid getting incorrect data afterwards. Because imagine you want to get this form filled by a thousand people and uh, you are allowing them to fill it but then after getting the data, you're not able to contact anybody from the number because the number is entered in so many different formats and somebody has made errors. So to avoid such things, you need to make a set of rules. And this type of 
uh, a set of rules is also created in a database. And that is what Integrity Manager does. It checks if the data being entered is following all these rules or not. The next thing we have is uh, Authorization Manager. Authorization Manager checks if you are actually authorized to access what you're trying to access. For example, if you are a manager, you will have more access to data than a person who's just a simple clerk in the, in the office. So there has to be some authorization process wherein you enter your username and password and the person can know that um, this is exactly the person who is supposed to access this data. That is known as authorization. Next, we have Transaction Manager, which you can see at the far end of the Storage Manager. A Transaction Manager ensures consistency of the database. Consistency means correctness of data. And later on in, in the next uh, chapters, you will study that there is a con the, the consistency of the database is affected by a lot of things, not just wrong data being entered. It is affected because of concurrency where people are trying to do so many things at the same time to the database. There are so many people modifying the database at the same time. So there are several reasons why there can be a problem with the consistency or correctness of the database. And so this thing is handled by the transaction manager. The next component that we are going to see is the file manager. So file manager manages allocation of space and data structures on the disk storage. And this is not basically storing the data for you. This data is stored within the disk, but the file manager gives you a nice way of looking at it. Because when you open your phone's file manager, you are able to see what types of files you have, what types of videos you have by clicking on something. So it doesn't mean it is stored in, the, in your phone that way. It is never stored that way in the secondary memory, but you are just able to see it that way. There's also a buffer manager, which you can see right here. The buffer manager fetches data from the disk to the main memory, and then it decides uh, what, and, and, and then it decides what to keep in the cache memory. So if you know your system consists of several types of memories and um, but one of them is the secondary memory which is where your data actually lives and then there's the main memory which is much more expensive than the secondary memory and this is where your data is uh, brought when you want to work on it so if you want to work on a file a word file a word document then that document is opened and brought to the main memory so that you can make changes to it and once that is done, it is kept back into the secondary memory so that um, it, it can stay there forever. It does not get deleted the next day you open it. And then there's also a cache memory. So, you know, reading and writing into the secondary memory from main memory is quite an expensive job. And your computer always tries to, your operating system always tries to minimize this. So in order to be able to minimize uh, this reading, writing time, sometimes some of the data is stored in cache memory. So the cache memory is the data that is accessed very frequently by you. So when the system knows that you're going to access this type of data very quickly or very, very frequently, then it tries to keep that in the cache memory so that you do not have trouble accessing that data so that you don't have to take a long time to get that data since you require it on a daily basis. So the buffer manager does all this, all these jobs. It, it um, fetches the data from secondary to main memory. It fetches data from main memory and puts back into the secondary memory. It also decides what type of data is important and what to keep in the cache. So all these things are done by buffer manager and this is what the storage manager looks like now back to the big picture you can see once again this is the storage manager and it's how it's connecting to everything upwards it's connecting everything up there with everything down here which is the disk storage 
So let's look at the disk storage. I've zoomed in on the disk storage. What you see here, they are all uh, different types of data structures. So they are also known as the storage manager data structures, where you can see there are data files. Data files actually contain the data which is present in the database. And there's a data dictionary which uh, stores the metadata and particularly the schema of the database. It tells you which tables are there, which columns are there, which rows are there, what are the data types. I already explained what is a schema in my previous video. So this is what uh, is stored in the data dictionary. And finally, there are also indices. Indices are data structures that actually um, allow you to access data very quickly. And there's a whole whole unit, whole chapter about indices. And you're going to learn about those more in detail over there. But right now, you can just understand that they are data structures that allow you to access your data quickly from the database. So that's the disk storage. And now we're going to, since we're finished this bottom level, we are going to move on to the level, middle level right here, which is the query processor. Now, this is very interesting because this is somewhat the heart of the database. This is where all the action happens. So first we are going to see, you can see here, uh, there are short forms mentioned. One of the short forms mentioned acronym is DML, which is known as data manipulation language. I'd like to explain that to you first before I talk to you more about the query processor. So DML deals with retrieval of information, with insertion of new information, and with deletion. So um, retrieval of information means you want to access some data from the database. You just want to read it. You don't want to do anything to it. You just want to see what's there. That is called retrieval. And this is done using a language which is known as a data manipulation language. Then there's insertion, which means you want to insert some new information into the database. This is also done using DML. And if you want to delete something from the database, that too is done using DML. And finally, if you want to modify something that is present in the database, you can do that using data manipulation language. So all these operations can be performed by DML. Thank <laughs> you.